This weekend, the Super Bowl will feature two black starting quarterbacks for the first time ever. So we thought this was a good time to revisit the story of New Kensington native Willie Thrower. Rich Walsh tonight with the first black quarterback to play in the NFL. The aptly named Willie Thrower was born to play quarterback and to be a trailblazer. In the late 1940s, Thrower led Ken High to three straight Whippeal titles despite facing questions about his positioning. I give credit to uh, Don Fletcher, uh, who was the coach at Ken High back then, um, for putting uh, him at quarterback in the 40s. Okay, uh, We couldn't even vote in some places in the 40s. He wasn't a huge man physically, except for his extremely large hands, which were actually featured on Ripley's Believe It or Not. First time I met him, shook hands with him, his hands were so gigantic. His, one of his nicknames was Mitts, and he could hold a football. His hand would almost engulf the football. I know it engulfed my hand the first mm -hmm. time I ever met him. Those hands and his powerful arm drew the attention of college scouts. But there was one problem. Miami was looking at him, Georgia Tech was looking at him. But once they found out what ethnicity he was, they didn't want him. So that's how he ended up at Michigan State. The Spartans program was integrated. And during his sophomore year, Thrower became the first black quarterback to play in the Big Ten in 1950. After graduating from Michigan State, he signed as an undrafted free agent with the Chicago Bears prior to the 1953 season. Later that rookie year, he became the first black man to play quarterback in the National Football League on October 18, 1953, when he replaced an ineffective George Blanda against the San Francisco 49ers. Despite breaking the color barrier, Thrower never became a household name. In fact, many still don't align him with his remarkable achievement. There's people here that didn't even believe him. Never believed him. If you didn't know him, if you knew him, knew him, you knew what he did. I didn't find out until I was like maybe 13, 14 years old. Fortunately, Willie Thrower has been getting more attention recently for his accomplishments. His statue stands here at Valley High School, and also the Willie Thrower Foundation was formed just a few years ago, and they hand out an award every year to the area's best high school quarterback. You know, our organization, the Willie Thrower Award Foundation, uh, we've been able to uh, bring awareness uh, to the man and the type of human being that he was. Okay, and that is one thing about the man, was character at all times. That character was what gave Thrower the courage to prove the doubters wrong, and it also set the stage for this weekend's Super Bowl. To be on the world stage um, and uh, have two black quarterbacks uh, starting in the Super Bowl, I think it's special, and I've learned more and more about the, the history of the black quarterbacks since I've been in this league, and uh, uh, the guys that came before me and, and Jalen set the stage for this, and now I'm just glad that we can kind of set the stage for guys that are uh, kids that are coming up now. From where he started from 1953 to right now in 23 is 70 years. And we're featuring two black quarterbacks. That just goes to show you the next generation, how many other black kids is going to be willing to want to, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Thanks, Rich Walsh. And uh, Willie Thrower played just one year in the NFL, but his legacy endures. His foundation will be honoring that legacy by handing out the Willie Thrower Award to the top high school quarterback in western Pennsylvania on March 25th in New Kensington.